Hi, my name is Liz and I'm the lead exotics nurse here at Mount Laurel Animal Hospital and this is Dana, one of our other exotics nurses with her rabbit Kahlua. Kahlua has graciously volunteered herself today to help us demonstrate how to properly syringe feed a rabbit. So syringe feedings are the ideal treatment for a condition known as GI stasis. Rabbits, chinchillas, guinea pigs, all of these animals are really prone to having GI stasis because they're all hindgut fermenters. So what that means is that these guys have a really special bacteria that lives in their GI tract all the time, and when they stop eating or having normal bowel movements, their GI tract fills up with this really painful gas. And when they get this painful, they become very uncomfortable, they don't want to move, this gas can continue to build up, and unfortunately this can become fatal if not properly treated. Today we really want to stress how important these syringe feedings are for your pet when one of our doctors diagnoses them with GI stasis. GI stasis can also include having abnormal bowel movements like I mentioned earlier. So this can include a bowel movement that is not large enough, it's very small, it's dry, it's misshapen, so these are the things that you want to look out for for the beginning stages of GI stasis. We also want to stress how really important it is to have yearly exams with one of our doctors so that we can determine if any of these things are going on before the problems start. So the most important thing for your feeding is to gather your materials before you start. So the first thing you want is obviously your pet. You want a very large towel. You also want your feeding and you want the appropriate size syringe as well. Um, for a rabbit the size of Kahlua, who's a medium to large size rabbit, she would probably use a 60cc syringe with a catheter tip on top. Um, but any of these are useful for any other size smaller. Sometimes um, the bigger rabbits will need something smaller, especially for a chinchilla or a guinea pig. Something this size would be even better. This is about a 12 mil syringe. But all of these are catheter tip, which makes it easier for the feeding. So one of the first steps that you want to do in any syringe feeding is you want to go ahead and you want to make up your feeding. Uh, what we do here is we use critical care and we mix it up with about two parts water, one part of the feeding, and we make it up to be a little bit thicker than applesauce consistency. These feedings are really important as well because it helps get the GI tract moving again, it helps provide extra nutritional support, and it also helps rehydrate it. So it's really important to make this up properly. Sometimes if you're having difficulty getting the feeding into the front of the syringe through the nozzle, you can always transfer it through the back with using a spoon or a tongue depressor. And you wanna make sure again that you're doing this before you get your pet prepared. And you always wanna make sure you make up the entire amount that the doctor prescribes. Sometimes with a larger rabbit, it can be a very large amount, but whatever the doctor says has to be done, otherwise it's not gonna be properly treated. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get Kahlua ready. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put her on a large towel and we're gonna do what's called a bunny burrito. So the first step in doing that is placing her on the towel long ways and Dana is going to put the back end of the towel over her hind end and then she's going to flip over each side. This helps your rabbit feel very secure and that they can't back up and move around and um, she's also doing this on a table. Now for any beginner, I recommend that you guys start it on the floor. Um, this just prevents any accidents from happening. We don't want these guys jumping off the table and having more problems. Um, Dana is also using a washcloth, that's also important to have. Um, if Kahlua decides to drool some of the food out, we want to make sure that she stays nice and clean. Sometimes it gets on their dewlap and we want to prevent that from happening. Now that we have our pet in our bunny burrito, uh, Dana's going to take her elbow and she's going to kind of support Kahlua's hind end so that she can't back up. She's using that same hand to place the syringe into Kahlua's mouth. Now one of the biggest tricks that you can do is you can kind of locate their incisors in the front here and then you're going to go to either side of those incisors. There's a space between their front teeth and their molars that allows you to be able to put the feeding inside. She gently inserts the syringe and only puts a little bit into her mouth before taking the syringe out and allowing her to chew. She's using her washcloth to clean off her face so that it doesn't build up and get cakey and nasty. Um, she's also using her other hand there to support her chin and her legs. Um, some people just like to support their chin, but that way she can be able to have control of Kahlua's head so that she can't thrash around and get out of her hold. And then she just puts her down and allows her to chew. Now sometimes you might have a little bit more of a problem with this. Some of them like to hold it in their mouths, some of them don't like to chew. So this is when troubleshooting really comes into play. Now what you can do, some of the rabbits or chinchillas or guinea pigs don't like to be restrained the entire time. So what you can do is you can kind of release them from their burrito. 
um, pet them, get them to move around. It's also really important with GI stasis to let them run around to encourage them to move. This gets the gas moving out of their system, so there's multiple benefits to this troubleshooting method. If you have extra problems where they're really not chewing, they're not moving, um, you've tried several different methods, please give us a call, contact us so that we can you know, walk you through it. Maybe we might have more suggestions. If it continues to happen, it's really important for you to contact us and probably schedule a recheck visit. There could be an underlying reason why they're not taking the syringe feedings well, and we really want to make sure that we examine your pet properly and thoroughly so that we can get to the real reason of why they're not eating. Um, we really want to stress the importance of these syringe feedings. They need to get their entire amount. I know sometimes it can be very time consuming, it can be very stressful, but in order for these guys to get better and pull out of this condition, they really need to get their entire feeding that the doctor prescribes. Again, if you're having any problems, please contact us and we hope you enjoyed this video and we hope that it helps you treat your pet safely and effectively at home.